Today on The Daily Bell Ringer, we're taking a look at Lucretia Mott. Hello, welcome to The Daily Bell Ringer. Um, as always, there's questions down in the description to answer, and I'd love to see your answer to question number five in the comments below. So today we're talking about Lucretia Mott, uh, one of the most important uh, women's uh, rights advocates of the 1800s. All right, She's a women's rights advocate, but she's also a leading figure in the fight against slavery as well. So let's get into a little bit about Lucretia Mott. So Lucretia Mott was born January 3rd, 1793 on Nantucket Island in Massachusetts, and she was born into a Quaker family. And if you remember the Quakers and studying them before, remember the Quakers were kind of ahead of the curve in terms of understanding uh, what equality was really all about. Remember, they, they believed that women, men and women should be treated equally. They believed that every race should be treated equally. So like I said, you know, they're really ahead of the things. They're very progressive in their thoughts, especially for this time period. And so she goes to a Quaker uh, boarding school in New, in New York State. And by 1811, she was living in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and that's where she meets her husband, James Mott. They get married, and they end up having six children together. But both her and her husband, James, they were very uh, active abolitionists. And when I say abolitionists, again, I'm talking about someone who wanted to get rid of slavery. They wanted to abolish slavery. And so they joined the American Anti-Slavery Society there in the 1830s. And remember, that was led by William Lloyd Garrison, one of the giants of the abolitionist movement. And Garrison really recognized how important Lucretia Mott was and kind of recognized that she could be this great voice pushing for the abolition of slavery. And so he really pushes her to really take a lead role. And actually in 1833, she founds the Philadelphia Female Anti-Slavery Society. But in her work against slavery, she begins to really form some ideas about women's rights as well. In 1840, she travels to London to attend the World Anti-Slavery Convention. And it's there she meets another woman named Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and they become lifelong friends. But it's while they're here at this convention that they, they kind of really begin to realize how much women need to fight for more rights because they were refused even uh, the ability to participate in this convention just because they were women. So they come back to America and in 1848, Stanton, uh, along with Lucretia and several other women, they organize what's known as the Seneca Falls Convention held in Sene Seneca Falls, New York. Um, now this is, this is not the first meeting of women arguing for women's rights, but the Seneca Falls Convention is kind of widely considered by historians to really be the convention that really kicks off the American push for women to have more rights, okay? And so about 300 people attend this convention, including Frederick Douglass, who was, again, one of the leading uh, abolitionists, abolitionist figures of, of the time. But we got to think about rights that women had here in the 1800s and the things that they were fighting for at the Seneca Falls Convention. Some of the things that they brought up were saying, that, you know, women should have equal rights to education. They should have equal opportunities for jobs. Um, they should have property rights. Again, at this time, you know, women didn't necessarily have property rights. Um, they should have right to be able to control their own finances, their own money. But one of the biggest things they argue for is for women's suffrage. And of course, when I say suffrage, what I'm talking about is the right for women to be able to vote. Because at the time, people, women did not have the right to vote. So those were some of the big issues that were brought up there at the Seneca Falls Convention. And it really just kind of snowballs from there where this issue of women's rights becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And Lucretia Mott is one of the leading figures of that. She continues to speak at more women's rights uh, conventions. She actually publishes a book, uh, Discourse on Women, which was kind of a history of how women had been mistreated uh, here in America. But not only that, she continues her fight against slavery. Uh, of course, in 1850, we have the Compromise of 1850, which uh, included the Fugitive, the Fugitive Slave Act, and Lucretia and her husband James are two of the, the leading figures fighting against that. In 1866, Mott became the first president of the American Equal Rights Association. And it's there shortly after that she begins to fight against the 14th and 15th Amendment, which you might be kind of surprised by that, because the 14th and 15th Amendment were the amendments to the, the Constitution that that granted African-American men the right to vote. Now, Lucretia was by no means against uh, African-Americans having the right to vote. What she was against was the fact that it only allowed men to have the right to vote. And so she basically, you know, argued that point and said, you know, we need to make more additions to these amendments to allow women to have the right to vote. 
Unfortunately, she never lived long enough to see women to get the right to vote. Um, she actually died on November 11th of 1880 at the age of 87. Now, even though she didn't get to live long enough to see women to actually get women's suffrage, uh, she really was one of the main, main figures that planted the seed that eventually led to women having more rights and to women having the vote. All right, so hopefully you learned something there, and thanks for watching.